Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about minimal change disease and the treatment and prognosis of it. This is a disease that affects the kidneys. All right, let's get to it. All right, minimal change disease treatment and prognosis. Just a reminder that all this information is intended for education purposes only. This is not medical advice. If you have a concern about your health, you should go see your doctor. All right, let's get into it. So what are the goals of this lesson? We're gonna learn about what is minimal change disease. We're gonna talk about the initial treatment for this condition. We'll talk about the treatment for some tricky types of minimal change disease. And lastly, we'll cover the prognosis. What's the outlook for these patients? All right, so what is minimal change disease, sometimes abbreviated MCD? So minimal change disease is a type of nephrotic syndrome. And nephrotic syndrome is a term that we use to refer to having large amounts of protein in the urine normally more than 3.5 grams per day. We also will see low albumin levels in the blood, and you can get symptoms like swelling in the legs and other parts of the body. Minimal chain disease accounts for 90% of nephrotic syndromes in kids. So primarily, this is a pediatric condition we encounter. However, it does count for a small minority of cases of nephrotic syndromes in adults, around 10%. So 10%, that's not insignificant. So even for adult nephrotic syndrome, it's important to know how to manage this. It's caused by cell-mediated immunity. Uh, so basically your immune system is a little bit out of control and you it's thought to have both T cells and B cells. These are different parts of your immune cells. They're both thought to be involved in contributing to the damage we see in minimal change disease. And a key characteristic uh, that we see on the histology, so when you take a kidney biopsy and then you look at the cells under an electron microscope, you'll see something called effacement of the podocyte foot processes. So we're gonna describe what that means. So what is foot process effacement? So here is a schematic of the glomerulus. Uh, so this is going to be where the blood filtration takes place within the kidney. Here in the, blue, here in the blue, this is the glomerular basement membrane, just like the membrane that's going to separate how the blood filters. And then in the green, these are the podocyte foot processes. So podocytes are some cells that surround the basement membrane. And then there's a certain part of the cell called the foot process that we see here. And then here in the bottom, this is gonna represent uh, where the blood is flowing. Uh, and then up above, that'll be where the urine is. Uh, and this pink dot here, that's gonna represent some proteins that we have. So normally what happens uh, in the kidney, in the glomerulus, you have the protein in the blood and you have these foot processes that kind of prevent protein from spilling into the urine. So protein will go, try to go through this barrier, but because of these foot processes, boom, it's rejected. And so you keep the protein in the blood, you don't lose it in the urine. However, in minimal change disease, we have effacement of the foot processes. So they kind of think of these like a sea of mushrooms that kind of create a barrier. And then in minimal change disease, your immune system attacks it, chops it off. And that's the effacement of the foot processes that we see right here. And so basically you lose some of that barrier that prevents loss of the protein. So here again, we have the proteins in the blood. And because all these foot processes have been decimated, you lose this protein. It spills in the urine. Uh, and here the proteins are, you're going to lose it in the urine. And then it causes a lot of the symptoms that we talked about in nephrotic syndrome. So now let's get into the treatment. So the mainstay of treatment is gonna be glucocorticoids. So these are steroids. And essentially what these are gonna do is dampen down the immune response that is contributing to the changes we see in minimal change disease. 
outcomes are pretty good with this. About 80 to 95 percent of adults achieved complete remission with steroids. For some scenarios, maybe you can't use steroids. Either the patient doesn't tolerate it because of the side effects, or maybe they're not a good candidate because they have other conditions where you wouldn't want steroids, like if they have uncontrolled diabetes, if they have some sort of raging infection, um, steroids could be a bad idea in those situations. So there's some alternate plans we can use. These include drugs like calcineurin inhibitors. So those will be medications like cyclosporin or tacrolimus. And sometimes you can also use mycophenolate. Now, there are some special types of minimal change disease uh, that's either called frequently relapsing or glucocorticoid dependent. So let's define that. Frequently relapsing minimal change disease is defined as having two or more relapses within six months or four or more relapses in one year. That's frequently relapsing. And then glucocorticoid dependent means that you have a relapse either during or within two weeks of completing your steroid therapy. Uh, so normally with the steroids, you'll do about four weeks of treatment. And then if you achieve remission, you'll taper off the steroids. But in glucocorticoid dependent, you'll get the relapse while you're still on the steroids or really soon after stopping them, uh, the symptoms come back. Uh, and that's why I call it glucocorticoid dependent because you're reliant on these steroids to dampen the effects of the disease. So because of this, we sort of up the ante on the treatments and we use medications like cyclophosphamide, calcineurin inhibitors, like we talked about previously, mycophenolate, uh, or a medication called rituximab. And essentially all of these medications are gonna be modulating the immune system uh, to dampen down that immune response that you have in minimal exchange disease uh, so that you can relieve the effects of the disease and relieve the symptoms. So what's the prognosis of this condition? Overall, really good. Like I said, the great majority of patients achieve complete remission. And the greatest prognostic factor is the initial response to steroid therapy. So if they respond well to the initial steroid therapy, you know, the outlook's going to be pretty good. The like rare cases when things don't turn out well is when you have a lot of issues and you can't manage it well with the steroids. So you may be wondering what happens if I have minimal change disease and I don't do anything. So left on its own, there is a significant fraction that may achieve complete remission without any treatment, but there are some risks involved with that. That's because you have a lot of the complications that happen with nephrotic syndrome complications of losing protein in your urine can be severe, sometimes life-threatening. Uh, and the, this is the risk of things like blood clots because you lose clotting factors in the urine, and then you're at risk for clots. Sometimes these clots can go to your lung, cause a pulmonary embolism. Sometimes they can go to your brain, cause a stroke. Uh, those are very severe things. Uh, we can also get swelling. That's what edema is. You can get it in your legs, uh, around your eyes. And then also we can see injury to the kidney. Uh, and then over time that can lead to CKD, chronic kidney disease. So because of these risks of severe nephrotic syndrome, uh, it's important to treat minimal change disease. And the good news is that the treatments are quite effective. All right, let's summarize what we learned today. We learned that minimal change disease is an immune mediated cause of nephrotic syndrome. It accounts for 90% of cases of nephrotic syndrome in kids and 10% of nephrotic syndromes in adults. It's characterized by the podocyte foot effacement. So think of the sea of mushrooms on the glomerular basement membrane getting chopped down and you spill and lose all this protein into the urine. The mainstay of treatment are steroids. There are alternate therapies available if the patient doesn't respond to the steroids or if steroids are contraindicated for whatever reason. And overall, the prognosis is quite good. The vast majority of patients achieve complete remission with treatment. All right, everyone, that's all for today's lesson. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.